Yeah, yesterday the talk was very constrained because it was only a bit less than 40 minutes. So here the idea is to do it again, but a bit uh, more relaxed so I can show uh, the processes in more detail. That should hopefully fully help you understand uh, what the processes here are. So, well, first, welcome everyone. Thanks for being here. Uh, it's amazing to see this event has grown so much since last year. Last, it's pretty impressive. Uh, let's hope it keeps growing like this. Uh, so, well, the idea of these talks is, uh, I, I will, is more than, than explain you. Like this sounds like a, a business uh, talk, and it doesn't have anything to do with business. But if you want to ask me ab about business, that's okay run a company for many years, been consultant with business, I, I cannot answer that. It's not the idea. Uh, the idea is uh, explain that you can do something really nice by using only free software tools. Uh, so what's the motivation for this talk? Uh, you know, a year ago, uh, Godot 3 was released uh, with a new rendering engine. Uh, it's still not completely full of all the features that we would have liked to have needs more performance fixes and things, but it was something completely different to what it was before, which was mostly a 2D engine or barely 3D, just for mobile. Um, the, um, the Godot 3 engine had a lot of new features that are more common in the high-end engine, so we, the idea was that we needed uh, something to showcase it. Uh, the engine was made, but how to show people that it, you can do something really good looking with it, so we need a demo to showcase it. Uh, Godot always had a 2D platformer demo. Is there anyone in this room who didn't check the platformer 2D demo? Oh my god, there's only one person. Okay, that's good. <laughs> uh, we also have a 3D version uh, that looks pretty bad. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I have it here to show you how bad it looks like. <coughs> uh, let me go full screen. This is a three. This is pretty much just like the two D one, but made in in three D. Honestly, it looks really bad. It's I made the art myself, <laughs> and I made all this myself. Uh, the idea of it is more like, if you learn how the two D platformer works, it's just just the same code but made in three D. Uh, it's not really mean to showcase uh, the engine. It's more like so you learn how to make something in 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 three D after learning how the two D ones. So yeah. 3D version looks looks pretty bad. Uh, with, uh, with the new render, Godot is capable of much better. So here's where the journey began. Uh, interestingly, uh, the artist who worked for 3D uh, for the new demo is the same guy who made the pixel art for the 2D platformer demo. The 3D one is my art. I'm really bad. The, but the 2D one, the pixel artist. The guy actually is a professional 3D artist. As he's he's one of, one of the best ones in South America, uh, where I live. So the idea was to hire him to 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 do the, the new demo. Uh, we started with concept and prototyping. Uh, one of the ideas was like, if we make something that if you want to make something that looks professional. Uh, uh, it needs to be like trendy, like futuristic. Now, futuristic games are like all trendy now. You know, me medieval, medieval, medieval. Uh, who you said that? Okay. Medieval games are uh, and are not trendy any longer. This is not 2008. And now games have to be futuristic. Uh, retro futuristic, actually, I think is a trend now. Uh, we wanted to make a level that is curved because when you make a level that is just too blocky, it looks too amateurish. Uh, so if the level is more curved and has more curves all around, it usually looks more professional. Uh, we want to, to make multiple rooms just so you can see how the lighting conditions change. Uh, and it had to be short, but it had to be pretty. Uh, the idea is that it, it's pretty, it looks really nice, like packs a punch and just short and nice. Uh, what you can see here is the, the layout we made. Uh, you would start like from, oops. oops. I broke it, actually, also. It clips in. Uh. It would clip in if it had still the clip, but I broke it. I, uh, I probably hear. Sorry, guys. Let's... Here, it's working again. Sorry about the technical difficulties. 
Okay, should be working again. Okay, now be more careful with the cable. The idea is that you start here, you walk from a deck, then you go to a lower deck. At all times, you can see this abyss, this huge abyss. Uh, you fight a few enemies, then you cross a bridge and you get to the reactor room, which should, should have a pretty nice reactor. Like nuclear reactor, but it's not plasma reactor, whatever. So, this is uh, the level blocking. Uh, having worked like, a lot of time professionally, what I can tell you is that you start always with a level blocking, which is, uh, uh, you can see it's all basic shapes. It looks, uh, if you're like not very trained, uh, this looks like an untextured level, but actually this is all a very basic shapes, like squares and circles, and nothing has a lot of detail in here. The idea is to just, you get an idea of how the level is going to look, but the art is not even close to final, the geometry is not textured. Uh, the geometry is too simple to be the final geometry. We, we did this level blocking just to make an idea uh, of how the level was going to be. This was done like in two days by the artist. When you're a professional artist, you can do these kind of blockings really quickly. Uh, so uh, this helps just the game flow, uh, the dimensions of the level. Let's see if the game looks good and uh, when the camera looks, how, what, what is it looking at? Uh, also helps to test the lighting and to test ideas for lighting and everything else. Uh, the next thing that we did was character prototyping. Uh, one thing I learned when working at 3D games is that uh, you should never use placeholder animations for your game uh, in 3D. Uh, because animations are just part of the gameplay and the control and the feedback. So even when prototyping you need to do uh, final Enoch animations that they represent the final version of the game. Uh, this is done in Blender, as you can see. Uh, that model is not the final one, but the animation is done in Blender. It was prototyped in Blender. Uh, we did gameplay prototyping. Here you can see the character. This is the new robot. Also, this, so there are some kind of problems with, uh, with uh, LibreOffice uh, play video playback, which seems to be some bug. It seems to have bugs. Well, anyway. Uh, what you can see there is the level prototyping. I can't. Why well, it doesn't look too bad? So, control must feel good. Interaction must feel good. Uh, wow, it closed. Okay. Come on, you can do it. Here. Okay. Uh, we use the animation tree. Uh, the animation tree helps you uh, communicate with the. It's a tool that. Helps you communicate from programmer to animator. Uh, this way, you can like set up and prototype all the animation transitions and everything related to to uh, all the state, all the possible states and blend states and filters and everything that all the animation is going to have. Uh, it, it's very good for just communicating with animators and to organize all the any all the very large amount of animations that you usually have in a project. This also was done in the prototyping stage. Uh, Godot has root motion. Uh, let me show you this actually running on the editor because this is like sucking. Uh, the video is not super good, I guess. Wow. <laughs> That's quite a mystery. Uh, Here you can see the robot scene. This this is the more final version, of course. You can see that the guy did a pretty nice job. Uh, if you have been using some Godot, you can see that this here is the scene that has been exported from Blender. Uh, here's in root. It says like bad robot large dot day, which is the Colada file. We just instantiated here and we said edit our children, so we can have, uh, have access to for some of the things like. Uh, animation tree was created here. You can see like all the animation states for this character. Uh, has a few one shots and different things, but it's just uh, in there, I guess. Has different like blend blend animations and everything. Well, that that's pretty much. And it also has like real motion. So when it uh, it went away, okay. Yeah, it's kind of weird, sorry, no, but no, and no, not used to LibreOffice, had to use LibreOffice because Google Docs uh, wouldn't stream things well. Root motion means that when you animate a character, the, the character animation is uh, built into the animation. 
let me see if I, if I can show you this in, in, in Blender actually. So now that we have a bit more, a bit more time, I will close the engine. Quick, maybe I might hit this in Blender. So this is the Blender scene. Uh, I can show you the, the animations for the character, which are here. If you can see when the character rotates, it actually rotates, it's not done in place. You know, in games like more than 10 years ago, when characters uh, were animated by animators, they have to be animated in place. Because when you run, like, you stay in place and you actually animate the physics. Uh, nowadays, especially since Assassin's Creed, what is very common is to do this uh, root motion thing. There is a bone, which is a root bone, which is actually animated. The, the, the turn animation is animated with a bone. So what is done with the, with the engine later is to just nullify this animation from the bone. So the, the thing remains like completely in place. Like for example, the, where is the walk animation? Uh, one of these is for walking, this one. If you see the guy actually is moving forward, uh, this allows Using root motion allows you, as you can see, that the foot or, or the whatever is touching the floor remains aligned because the animator animates just the actual motion and you can see that the foot are really nicely aligned when the, the, the guy moves. Uh, root motion will just cancel this motion and will leave the guy in place. So what we will do later, I will show you in code. If I can show you what, what this is done in code, it's pretty interesting. Oh, I'm in the wrong. Here. Uh, where is the script? You probably have used the move and slide function in 2D, right? Like, I'm pretty sure most of you made 2D games and use the, the new move and slide function. So this is the code for the robot. Uh, Okay, as you can see, this is pretty interesting. Uh, here, in this line here, I will try to make it bigger because it's probably very small in the screen. Can you see it better now? Here, the animation tree node, which is the one with the animation tree, you can get the root motion transform. This means this transform that is happening in the in the root no node, which is the, what the animator did to move the guy so that foot belong aligned to the to the floor. Uh, this is nullified in the in the animation tree, so this isn't apl applied when you, you when you move the guy. Uh, and then instead you can re retrieve this transform. So what this what is done here, as you can probably see, uh, we just get the velocity uh, from the root motion, like uh, the, the, the get the transform divided by the delta, which is the time happen happening in the iteration. Uh, and then it's fed to move and slide. So it's pretty cool because it has collision and everything, but it moves according to animation. Like you, you can do this combination of things. Uh, so you can have something like in like in games like in Assassin's Creed when you have the guy moving and it's super realistic because the, the foot keep attached to the floor. Uh, and if the guy moves to the side or does anything cool, the root motion will ensure that the guy will always will always move according to the artist's animation. But we need to move and slide in Godot. And then that means the guy will collide if it has to collide and, or will just uh, keep walking over a surface or up and down. So this, this combination of things is very useful for, for 3D games. Okay, let's continue. Uh, so VFX is something you probably should try to make final in your game. Uh, the VFX are part of uh, the feedback of, of your game. So if you prototype, you should probably try the VFX to be as close as possible. Uh, this is done with Godot. I will show you in the engine now we have a bit more time how this is done. This is actually pretty cool. Again, the same thing. You can see here, this is the actual scene that was imported from Blender. Uh, this is a bone. You remember this is a bone attachment. This tracks the motion of a bone. Uh, it's tracking the motion of the of the cannon. You know, it has this cannon over here. Uh, the bone attachment is attached to the bone of the cannon. 
uh, it has a mesh which is a ray, which probably you're not seeing it now, but this is actually the ray that it's shooting. So um, it has a material and it has a shader. And this shader has a clip distance, which is, uh, it, is it visible right now? <coughs> it not be visible. Let me check. No, the ray is visible. Mm, so, a uh, transparency, is this, I can put it to one. Ah, uh, here you can see the smoke. But actually this shader, what it does is, uh, let me show you. Mm go from zero to one well, I, I will show it animated it will make more sense uh, I have shoot animation uh, this this animation changes but I'm here you can see it animates the right uh, I will shoot just shoot so you can see it. can you see here this is when the guy shoots it just draws energy from the air and then uh, you can see from the animation player, it's animating many shader parameters, like the smoke and everything is part of the parameters. The, there it, turns a, it turns on a light when it shoots, then turns it off. Uh, then it puts particles to emit and then stops emitting the particles. Uh, the explosion also emits particles. Uh, it even like disables the animation tree, so when you're moving, it doesn't annoy you. Uh, it, it's like calling functions that I check this is should check here it's checking it should cause this function and the function checks if the guy is hitting something uh, and then just resume resume moving because the guy will stop then then shoot and then stop moving uh, this is all new Godot 3.1 you have audio clips so you see when the guy shoots you may be able to I will raise the volume here So this is all done with the animation system in Godot, which is pretty amazing. It's that this is something like pretty unique to how you do things in Godot. You just can look at all the things that you can like change to to just uh, do this shoot animation, check if it's hitting something, uh, resume walking. Well, that all the effects are done with this, and you can see that it's uh, affecting so much like uh, shader parameters, uh, lighting conditions, particles. It affect it calls functions. Uh, it plays audio. You can do all this very nicely with, with how Godot does animation. So let's go back to the presentation. Well, I, this is how it looks when you when you're working. This is all in the prototyping. Maybe you should actually play it from here. I don't know how to make it work. At some point it was working, then it just stopped working. Hey, it's working. No. Yeah. Ah, not any longer. Well, anyway, you can see how it is. So texturing. This is something very interesting. If you're working on 3D, uh, it's interesting that you know how to actually do textures yourself because you may actually need textures uh, and you will not always find them on, on like royalty-free sites. There are a few royalty-free sites that you can't always print what you want. So uh, this is a short tutorial on creating a texture. Uh, I will show you how this works in GIMP 2.10, which is really amazing. Uh, as I said, you can you can find royalty-free textures around, uh, or you can create it from photos. And if you're using a realistic style, you can use Krita and paint them, but I'm not good at that. Uh, so I can't teach you much how to do it. Uh, this tutorial, I will do it live. I, I have this photo, which is from a Roman Reigns. I took it myself. This is a photo you can see. This is a GIMP. I took this is a photo. I just went with the camera, like chuck, and took a photo, a picture of the floor. So how would I make this tile? I, I need to make a tiling texture. So imagine I just I will just make a dot project. Uh, so you see what happens. This is how you create a Godot project from the command line. Do done. Oh, yes, yeah, that's true. So, well, anyway, that's it. This is the empty project. So, I go back to GIMP. I will save this. Uh, uh, 
floor.png. So back here, you can see the, the texture is here. We'll just make a 3D scene, uh, mesh instance, uh, quad mesh, uh, new material. I will put a um, uh, texture in a little. And it's quite big, but it's done. We'll make it unshaded. Uh, so I will scale this to like CB and let's make it tile here just so it's clear I will remove the origin and the grid here you can see how th this texture that I took this is a what happens when you take a picture and then try to use it as a texture especially a tiling texture you can see it sucks doesn't really tile uh, so how do you make this thing that you see here an actual texture that is tiling beautifully and you can just repeat it and use for whatever you want i will go back to him here uh, the first thing you have to do is just find a region that may somehow be tiling so here then you crop it like for example like could be something like this i guess yeah this region may actually be something like this could work for tiling so Let's do it, then save it, then back. Uh, well, it's more like better, but it still doesn't look very good. So the first problem we're going to solve uh, is this problem that there is like a gradient. You see that it's in one side is bright, the other side is dark. Uh, with the new game, there is a really nice tool, which is called High Pass Filter. Uh, it's here, it's Filters, Enhance, High Pass. Uh, this is literally a high pass filter, just removes low frequencies. So just check this until it looks somehow okay. Like this is totally gray and then gives it some contrast. If you go too much, the gradient will remain there. So uh, this is kind of okay. Then you can check the contrast. So it doesn't look too horrible. And let's say it's okay like this. And let's save it. Then we go back. Oh, you see, they're no longer a gradient, but the texture still remains there. This is the first thing one needs to learn when doing uh, tiling textures. Just high pass filter is very useful for making tiling textures. Uh, it gets rid of the gradients on the pictures you take. It makes them very flat, uh, so it gets kind of rid of, uh, of a lot of lighting. So. As you can see, I will get close and there are still discontinuities like this texture actually is more difficult to see them, but if you look for them, eventually they should appear like here, you see? Uh, we have these continuities here. You can see it's not like totally, uh, it doesn't really repeat perfectly. It's like close, but it's not quite there. So there are two techniques to do this. Uh, one, which works for more of the general case, uh, you can do layer, layer effect here. You can do uh, transform. Uh, offset uh, you say half width and half height so you can see that it, the discontinuities become quite visible here uh, this is just the same texture off offset and wrapped so the cross that you see in the center is actually the uh, the previous borders of the texture so easiest way and more generic is you have something called clone stamp uh, I think it's one of these this you just select a region and then paint like with this, you can just fix it with the clone stamp. Like, uh, it's kind of like, okay, uh, I rotated by mistake. Uh, you can use the clone stamp here and it uh, will more or less fix the discontinuities. It works more or less. Just uh, no, probably you need to do it a bit better than what I'm doing. <laughs> so this will, you, you will save it and it will just it just you don't see them much more anyway and you have a very nice floor texture for your your new temple there is another technique i really like let me undo this it's more like an automatic way of doing it this is the previous one that wasn't looking looping is it or is it not yes it is i really like this one it's very easy to make something tile you just i will first duplicate it 
duplicate the layer no not this one this one you see i have a layer above a layer below uh i will hide the layer below so it's cle clear i'm working on the layer above gim already has something to make texture styles which is called uh make seamless you just make filters uh map file seamless but it kind of sucks you know this is destroyed this is this is destroyed. it doesn't really look very good because all it does is just make a crossfade of the texture just make like a crossfade so it, the texture crossfades itself uh, and this just layering above itself looks looks really bad so since all we care is that the borders uh, will wrap by itself i mean by themselves all you have to do is do the tile sem seamless but then just grab the eraser which is probably here let's make it a bit bigger a bit bigger and just like erase everything oh sorry this is not the eraser this is not the eraser oh i thought you had an alpha channel oh yes you didn't have okay now thank you now you do the eraser just leave the border just make sure nothing of interest gets like crossfaded so you just leave the border of the image like this i don't want it to, to crossfade uh this i don't want it so this is only the, the part and once you have this like this was remember you need to use the tile seamless effect and then you draw everything about the border then yes you just you just have a magically tiling texture with this you don't have to do like anything else it's just magical and it just loops because all you got is just keeping the part in the border, which is one that will blend into itself. And then I go back to the editor. And you can see that there is, you won't find anymore any kind of discontinuity. It will look fantastic. I really love this technique because it's like tiling textures with no effort and they always look great. So then there you have it. Remember the way it was before, like now it's looking fantastic. No gradients, no uh, discontinuities, like it just looks great. Yay. So, yay. But it's not enough. Let's. There's more. You probably want to, this is unshaded, but you probably want to add lighting to it. So I will just remove the shade. I will light the light. Let's put the lighting here. So you probably want this to include normal mapping i will just give a bit more energy to the light so this is completely flat i just move the light and nothing happens normally this should have normal mapping but you don't so what you need is to create first a height map actually do i have the beginning normal map plugin installed filters let me check mm, it's not installed but it's not a problem let's i will install it if my internet allows. Mm, please internet. Oh, okay, that was fast. So let's restart GIMP. Yeah, it's a separate plugin, you have to install it separate, but it's okay. So I should have it now. Yes, so uh, to create normal maps manually, I'm going to talk tomorrow about doing this for 2D games uh, because Godot supports 2D normal maps. Uh, but it's kind of the same. You need to create your own height map, which means like what is black is, is like far away and what is white is close to you. So you probably want like to have these things in between the tiles to be like black and the tiles you want them to be white. Uh, you can paint this manually if you want. If the texture is not co too complicated, you just could paint this, and especially if you're good at painting. But <coughs> in this case, doing this would be really complicated because the texture is really complicated. So a simple way to do this is just use something called embossing. You just filter. Mm, it's one of these. Like, ah, uh, distort, emboss. Here. And then you can see that it kind of resembles a height map like when you see that the the, the things like here the, the the spaces between the ties are black uh, you can use embossing or any other type of edge detect 
to, to generate this. Uh, fuck, I rotated without wanting to rotate it again. It, it's like Blender, I press shift and this rotates, so yeah. So then I I have this. this, this once you have a height map, you, uh, remember, depending on the texture, you can paint it yourself, you can just figure how to get, but it's important to know that what is black is what is uh, far away, what is white is what is close. You could just use the curves tool if you want to adjust a bit more like. Then here you can tell. Uh, more white, more black, whatever. Once you have this height map, uh, this plugin for GIMP is great, it's called GIMP Normal Map. So you go GIMP, Map, Normal Map. And then, well, it's quite... You have different ways, you can check which one you like the more, the most, like for example. And whatever you do, you have to invert the Y coordinate because normal standard normal maps usually have inverted Y. So there you go, you have more normal map from the previous texture. And you can see it's pretty close to what you would expect it to be. So let's save it with another name. What was I using this? Uh, floor normal. Then we go back to Godot and edit the material of the mesh instance uh, here. And normal map enabled and let's just put it here and then we have normal mapping this one is probably too exaggerated you can just change it or you can change you can change uh, the scale if you don't want it that's so whoop, whoop. maybe a bit less is okay uh, whatever is okay so if i move the light you can see that uh, it now applies the normal map properly like Whoa. so well, that's a kind of idea uh, you just uh, can create your own normal maps and your own uh, textures this way very very nicely uh, one thing that happened here is that when I created normal map probably I, I lost the tiling in the normal map so this there are lines here this happens because the normal map filter destroys the tiling pretty much so you can have see here that filter map uh, normal no 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 sorry, sorry sorry filter no layer transform offset uh, i will do this and you will probably see see that the normal map plugin is breaking this so you probably remember how to fix this now just duplicate the layer again filters uh, map tile seamless it just does a crossfade then eraser uh, I will hide this so it's clear and we just use the eraser again like I'm just making it like tile again yay there we go Now it's probably just tiling again, so I will save it again. Oh, export normal map. Then when I get back, you have you know that you see that the, the lines that appeared because of the filter disappeared. So that that's it. Um, well, that was uh, creating textures. I hope it was useful to you. So let's go to the presentation. Uh, now modeling I will explain you a few techniques for 3D modeling uh, one that is very easy to use and the, and the one that we, we use for the demo uh, this is called atlas based modeling basically you need to be in a mindset of an artist for this a bit like you just uh, you create an atlas which is like there are like two woods wood planks and some kind of round blue wood thing it doesn't have to mean anything in particular just create enough vari variety of shapes in a texture that you, you can use to later be creative and do modeling like you can see there's like a variety of shapes and with the same technique as i showed before uh, you have there the the um, how you call it the normal map and there's metalness and roughness uh, you just create them yourself uh, just get textures style them do whatever you have learned make sure that the albedo texture that which is the there doesn't really have any lighting because Usually light lighting is happens with the normal map with when a light happens to it. So just create anything you want, like an atlas there. And the idea is that you start modeling 
uh, and you create your model lines using the UVs for, for this atlas you made. You just have to be creative. Like you just create a lot of things that you will feel, feel that you will be useful for you to model. Can be like a bunch of them. And then just, for example, here, I, I made this, this table using the atlas. Uh, uh, this other table, I made a window. I made something like to sit at, like a chair or sofa. This was all done using the atlas. Uh, you can see the, the window has like a lot of things for whatever. So in the end you can create like, this room was created using this technique. Like it was really quick. I made in a couple of hours, just showing that you can just create an atlas and do a lot of furniture with this atlas very quickly. Uh, this te technique is called like atlas-based modeling. You first create the atlas and then uh, create the objects that use the atlas. As far as I know, I think Overwatch is one of the games that use this, this modeling technique, but it's very common in the industry to, to use this modeling technique. So let's go back to the one used for the TPS demo. Uh, this is called geometry-based modeling. <coughs> the idea is that you uh, don't really care about just texturing much uh, all the details. Uh, you just model everything that you don't care. If you have screws, you just put like a polygon where there is a screw, there is a, uh, everything you just like. Normally when you are modeling, this, this thing in here could be a texture, this could be a texture, just you just don't care with this technique. Everything is geometry. Don't do any kind of detail and texture. Just make really complex geometry. Why? Uh, because nowadays with GPUs, uh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can make really complex geometry and the GPU is going to handle it. Something you, unless you really willfully put like millions of polygons into some object or something like that, modern GPUs, you just make something very complicated. It, they won't really mind. The transform of the vertices is very fast nowadays. So what you do is, after you created the geometry, your materials are something called tree planner. Have you heard of tree planner mapping uh, before? Uh, tree planner mapping is something, it's also called auto texturing. I, I will show you like, with, with the texture we have just created, we will do tree planner mapping. Mm. There was the, a question on the chat. Yeah. Oh, I didn't update it, sorry. My computer, no, I brought this computer and forgot to update Google. So um, let me show you this very quickly. I will create a 3D scene. Oh, well, we have this scene before, but let's make a new one. Uh, and I will create a mesh instance. We can use actually CSG, it would be very nice. Like, uh, uh, we'll use a CSG a combiner. And then let's put like a box. And then let's put like a, a sphere. And then we can subtract the sphere to the box like this. Mm, where is the operation? I forgot how my own thing works. So mm, the operation was here. You guys remember where the ah, here 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 subtraction there you go so the sphere will should be subtracted from the box but was it this how it worked I don't remember I have sh I should read the documentation clearly <laughs> uh, or was it this one okay yeah that makes a bit more sense okay now ah uh, yeah it's the second that works on the on the so it should be the opposite order now I think well I don't know something like that. I will just add a light so this looks a bit better now this was subtraction or this was subtraction oh, okay there we go uh, imagine we have modeled this uh, this object um, so texture in this requires to just UV map, uh, get all the, put everything in a texture, then UV map the texture, hit a material, special material for this that uses the texture that you are painting for this. So auto texturing so is the same as tree planner mapping. I will show you how it goes very cool. I will create a material, a new spatial material. Let's make it for now. Um, albedo, we'll use this albedo pure light we go I have this texture here this is using the UE of the <coughs> um, 
same this one also we put the same material so mm, let's copy what paste okay it's using the same it's using the uvs now that come with it but it doesn't like looks kind of shitty so it's all deformed here it's uh, not nice so auto texture is something you can do which is uh, you set here in UV uh, tree planner and then look it's all pretty what it does is just create UV texture it just creates uh, it doesn't use UV mapping it just is like it samples in three different axes uh, the texture and depending on like the normal of the object it blends between them so you can do something really quick uh, and you get texturing like for example if i were to rotate this you would see something very disturbing like it's like oh because it's in local coordinates okay let's do it in uh where is this mm, i don't remember i think it's here flag or tree planner here now it's in world coordinates so if i rotate this uh, you can see now what it does this automatically creates like uv coordinates for your object just by but you can see that actually what it does is just blending with the trip with the other axis it just samples like one per once per axis and then blends depending on the on the direction the object is so this is called auto texturing uh, for a world coordinates it's not it's easier to use world tree planner for local objects it's easier to use uh, local tree planner but this makes sure that you just model an object and then you just put the material and it automatically has like texture you don't really need to you do you would mapping or complex things it's a very quickly way to texture objects so combining the texture i showed you before which is just model everything as geometry don't do detail as texture with this technique which is called tree planner uh, then you can have a lot of pre pre-assigned materials like for example you can make a metal you can make wood we can make like a lot of different materials and when you make geometry all you have to do is just assign those materials to the different like slots in the object and you really quickly have really complex uh, geometry with texture without having to auto to, to unwrap the dead uvs or everything thanks to this we were able to make the the tps demo so so quickly it's just a workflow that works really well so going back to the presentation oh, it doesn't use the window okay so this is how it looks when you do it properly uh, this is pretty much just there it has a bit of texture work but mostly it's just a tree planner and everything is just geometry like there all the detail you see there all the cables all the everything is just let, let me show you a bit better so like this this hole is model this is model this is model all this detail here and everything is super high poly but it just doesn't matter because your gpu is going to handle it fine like you can see this is, has a lot of geometry uh, well it looks really good i mean it, you can make this very quickly because you don't have to care about texturing or uv mapping or going to substance painter or anything like that uh, the alternative would be to just use substance substance painter if you want uh it's more work probably looks better if you take more time with substance painter uh, but it's not open source so i can't use it for the talk but uh i'm just waiting for the blender guys to implement something similar to substance painter regarding to just taking a material that has like the metalness the roughness the albedo and everything so you can just paint it over a surface with all together uh they still haven't done that i've heard that they're going to do it like after blender 2.8 is out uh, so come on blender guys we need you to save the open source or game development world but anyway this technique works really well it's really easy to do you can create a lot of very very high detail looking geometry very quickly so you can see here uh the nice thing is the materials are really reusable you just model and then assign materials this is just the way if you have seen for example dream or pixar movies they do this a lot they have modelers that just do all the geometry with all the tiles and they have the the guys who make the materials that just make gener generic materials then they drag the materials over the 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 objects it's the same technique uh so basically it looks really good if you just look at it just using geometry uh, it's not so much effort and it looks really good uh, and godot has j probes which works really well with this so finally level design and we're reaching more of the end of the talk uh here 
the level is built in Blender. If you have a grid, like you probably saw at first that we had a level blocking, which is like the very basic uh, shape of the level. And uh, once you have the gameplay working in there, you just tell your artist, okay, make it pretty. Uh, so everything is done in Blender. I will show you this instead of explaining it. Uh, it's somewhere. No. Uh, it's here, right? Actually, no, I will use it in Blender. Here we go. This is the level you have seen in the TPS demo. It's all in Blender. Hmm? Okay, I don't know why it's doing this function. I can't switch perspective mode off because my keyboard isn't being recognized. Oh, here, yes, there we go, there we go. Uh, so we go to distraction free. It doesn't work, well, whatever. Uh, here, well, you can see this is the level. Uh, I will go into it and you can see that everything has been, mod has been modeled. Uh, what you can see here is I will hide this layer here and it will make more sense to you. Okay, this is all the geometry of the level. As you can see, this was all model, then materials are assign assigned to it. There is a lot of reuse of objects, which means that you can make something really high polygon count. But as you will be reusing a lot of objects, it's not too terrible because uh, there's not that many unique objects uh, in this scene. You can see this. This is reused, this is reused like here, all the floor is reused all around. Uh, there is a lot of reuse in this level. Uh, when you are a professional artist, you are very good at reusing things because you know that it, it makes your job easier. So there is a lot of reuse here. Uh, everything was pretty much modeled, all the level is here. So you're probably wondering like, if you want to add collision to this, uh, how do we know where the player will collide? Uh, so. This is solved by, let me show you here. Where is the level? Where is here is the level? Come on. Okay, this is where the player will walk. Uh, and this layer has all the collisions. So how does this work? You see that the geometry has suddenly become much simpler. I will toggle it in and out. So you see that, it, look at the, at the rails here. When you turn on the collision layer, it's just a box. Uh, this is because physics engines don't like very detailed geometry for collision. So what we do is use another layer for the collisions. And if you select one of these objects, uh, I have no idea how to see the object here, but you should be able to see it here. No, here. Uh, the name of the object here has the string call only, which is collision only. If you add minus call only to the name of any object, this becomes a collision uh, and it's invisible later when imported. So you just basically model all the all the level and everything, then model the collisions and add minus call only to the name, uh, and it will work. If you notice, for example, even the props here, this is the prop, but this box here is the collision. You see here call only. So you can just tell the artist uh, make some simple collision for me where the character is going to walk and add minus call only to the name and the artist will do it, it's really simple. So this is pretty much how you do a level design. I mean, you just give the prototype, the blocking that was used to do the, the prototype, you just give it to artist and you tell him like, make it pretty, that's it. <laughs> the artist will know. Do your magic. Yeah. You're an artist, you're supposed to know how things look pretty. <laughs> I'm a programmer, I don't know about, about such things. So, uh, going back to the presentation. Well, you can see here, for example, it's the same, very simple collision, it's very simple geometry. This is set up to wireframe, so you understand better what is the collision and what is the object. Those are the props, and the, the boxes are the collisions, so when you walk, it doesn't spend too much in the physics engine in there. Uh, you have to tell your artist to use final material names in their scene. They don't need to be, they can be like colors, just flat. It doesn't matter if they are flat colors. Then in the engine, you can use a picture planner and 
replace it for something nice but if the names are not clear uh, then you won't find them find them in Godot just to replace them so you have to be very verbose and use very final material names so from the beginning uh, you can create likes in blender and they will be imported to the engine uh, and you can import them to Godot via uh, Colada or GLTF2 uh, still not supporting the FPX because of the license they have a proprietary license it makes it impossible to use with uh, free software but uh, the guys from Asim have reverse engineered the format so we're working on, on making it work anyway eventually so let me show you what happens now uh, I will show you how the level is imported and the more level or the more this is the Colada file uh, without any modifications. I'm opening it now here. As you can see, this is the Colada file. This is as it can. Uh, the only difference is that the materials have been assigned. You can see here in uh, level, uh, well, they are somewhere materials. Well, here's all the materials they were created and assigned later once you import it you just put all the materials manually and it will look like this pretty much as you can see it has a skybox that you don't want so what you do is you create a new scene here and you instantiate that level uh, here here you see that I have my scene with the demo level in here it's the same thing but I will create for example I would change the environment because I don't want a skybox because this is like an exterior so I will edit it and background uh, custom color just black just give me everything black I don't care like here since I don't see anything I will set this to unshaded here so to do the lighting is really easy in Godot. You just use something called J Pro. I will show you. It's just this node is like a grid. All you really have to do is ensure that it covers the whole area. You can put many of them. I just put the J Pro here. Mm. Here, it just pretty much covers the whole level. So once you have, you know, and once you have it covering everything, uh, I will disable the the. Um, here you can't see anything. I will also disable the grid. Origin. I will disable the gizmos. Thanks, Joan, for this. Here, here is the scene as it came. This thing that is here is uh, emission materials with emission. You can set like emission, which is mean that the material will emit light. Uh, everything else doesn't have emission. So when you bake uh, global illumination on GE probe, uh, both the materials with emission and the light will be taken in consideration. So I will show you that I will bake this. It will take a bit, but it's not too long. Not nearly as long as when you use other engines. So it's pretty nice. So we'll just let it bake. Uh, the nice thing of GE probe is that it doesn't really care about the amount of geometry you have. So you can have a lot of really complex geometry. It's not going to take longer because of that or need more performance or more texture memory. You just leave it baking like this. Uh, it will take a while. Uh, it's nice because you can just test lighting really quickly. Uh, if you mo move light, uh, the lighting will be updated in real time, which is really nice. You see it's, it's now more than halfway there. Oh. I think this is using multiple threads, but I don't know. Yeah, uh, it's yeah, it well, it's it's nearly done now, so it doesn't matter. Uh, and there you have <laughs> global illumination. You can see now that <laughs> yay! <laughs> you can see it actually looks pretty cool. Uh, like this is you can see the, the mission materials are like adding lighting to everything around uh, you can change some parameters in the j probe like propagation if you change propagation like uh, more or less 
mechanism or energy. And you, can, you can just like tweak it to whatever you want. So you see it doesn't really take that much effort to have something that looks like nice and pretty. Uh, you have now seen all the all it takes to, to do this. Now this is the, the part that the gameplay happens. It's around here. For I I forget that we have this cool mode for FPS lights. Yay. <coughs> Uh, keep the right mouse button press and use uh, WASD. <laughs> so you can see that the emissive, emissive materials are, are actually throwing lights. It actually looks really nice. Like you can see it here too. Like everything is lit by the emission materials. It's very nice. There is some leaking through polygons because uh, it's voxel based, but in general it doesn't really matter. You just make geometry that is wide and out so. So it lights won't come through. I mean, this is called like bleeding. It's common with voxel lighting techniques, but uh, you should create your geometry like knowing that this is going to happen. So in the end, it's all you care is that it looks good. Do you have an example of that happening in the table? Or yeah, this is probably a good example here. Like this here shouldn't have get so much lighting, I think. It's probably because it, it's in the same voxel as this. So it's getting more light than, than it should. Uh, it's just simple things, but it's very difficult to see actually. If you maybe go to the other side, but actually we left a space to avoid this from happening, as you can see, like from the interior, like now we are inside the Richter, but we purposely left enough room between the, see, this is like the, the middle part. Uh, this is so the voxel light won't come from one light to the other. So there, there are not that many places where you will see this, but, uh, it's what is it's used to be avoided one thing the voxel lighting has is that um it's very like low frequency so small details for occlusion won't be visible but you can fix this by like for example going here to let me show you for environment and using a uh, screen space ambient occlusion so you can just raise intensity i will make it affect ah because they have our ao map that you can use a screen space ambient occlusion to simulate uh, maybe it's like that. where are you I just went to hell okay let's go back to the level <coughs> here this uh, this is why I was saying you can use ambient occlusion to simulate like the the higher frequency occlusion let's see if I turn it on and off this makes some things like more occluded than others. Like for example, these corners, when I turn off the occlusion, like you see this is, it needs more high frequency like occlusion information. So combining GI Pro with screen space ambient occlusion actually makes it look really good in the end. Uh, you have screen space reflections, but this level isn't really designed <laughs> to use them. Uh, you can use a dawn mapper, uh, filmic is the most common one. Uh, auto exposure is too much for this, but maybe I can use uh, the glow effect. You can use it, uh, and then everything that has light will glow. You can set the threshold like 0 0.5. Uh, you can set the different glow levels. Uh, maybe screen is nicer here. I can change the intensity, but uh, looks better. It's, too it's way too exaggerated, but you get an idea. <laughs> Make it a bit, be a bit less. Uh, it looks nice now. So you see, that it doesn't really take that much work to say to take something that looks looks good. You just need to know the right techniques for modeling and for creating it. Uh, this technique of using detail and then free planner mapping is really good because you just focus on geometry. And if you're once you start modeling in Blender, uh, you just get fast at it. It's just, it's all key. Once your muscle memory happens after a few weeks of uh, struggling with it, you, you get really fast when modeling with Blender. So you can see that in every place that it looks really good with all these things applied. Uh, it's pretty much, uh, not that much effort to get this quality, but you don't really see many in this doing this. this, this all this demo was made probably like in three weeks. Uh, 
So. Uh, Yes, this was done because I wanted to simulate, uh, uh, you can see here, this uh, Godot still doesn't support um, volumetric lighting. And also this is like probably impossible to do with volumetric lighting because of the shape. So I did a special shader uh, here that uh, fades some proximity. If See, when I get close. Actually, the, the standard material in Godot lets you do this proximity fading. So you see that when I get close, it disappears. So you don't really see the polygons. It looks pretty nice. Th this is what the cons were for, uh, just to make this shader that disappears on proximity. Players just see the volumetric part. And when you get close, they disappear. So they don't really appear, appear like polygons. But you see, they look here far away. You can see them. They, they look pretty nice. So that, that's what it was made for. So then you can, if you want, adjust like brightness and contrast and saturate it, like do whatever you want, like click here. <laughs> Better not. <laughs> uh, there I just put some saturation and now it's like super like colory, like trendy, like uh, you can you can really use color correction. If you can like for example use depth of field here. Uh, let's images too much, too little here. Now you see what what is really far away is going to get depth of field. Like another thing you can use that I think I use in the in is the fog. Uh, the one that looks really good here is the hay fog, hay 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 big fox. Uh, I think zero and minus. Really was it? Yeah, here. See, you got this looks really good cake based fog because whatever goes before looks like there is like something mysterious going in there. Uh, I will change the color so it's more here. Here we go. And that's pretty much there's not a lot more than, than this. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's pretty easy to create these kind of things once you know the right techniques. Uh, it's the techniques the guys in the industry don't want you to know. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So well, this concludes the presentation. I, I hope you, you have enjoyed. If you have any questions, of course, uh, I'm here to answer anything you may probably did not understand because I'm not very clear. <laughs> Ah, yes. I, I thought at this point probably most of you did see the demo already, so I didn't show it, but... Run it from a release template. Oh. There we go. This is J probe updating. There we go. You can see this is what root motion is for. It, it looks, it moves so like realistic because the animator bakes the motion into the animation. So the, the foot always like, look at it rotate, for example. Oh, fuck. Uh, you see when it rotates, it's like totally realistic. This is the kind of things you do with root motion. And why it's so cool.
the demo still needs a lot more polishing but for now it's as much as I could make oh one more thing you probably noticed that the sound like is very like re reverby and everything uh, I will stop the demo and show you this is another really cool thing you can go with, with the with the engine now Let me show you, this is really cool actually. Uh, um, you know that there are two different areas, this very large area uh, that has like the deck and the reactor, which is inside, this is the, 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 the level for the game. Uh, there is something really cool here, which is that, uh, we'll look for it, where is the sound, here. There are two areas. Uh, you can use areas not only for like detecting objects in Godot, but also for for sound. Uh, they have a property here, which is uh, called audio bus. Uh, audio bus. Uh, you have can override an audio bus and send it to a bus. What does this mean? Like there, there is this area here, which is uh, outside sound. Uh, let me turn off the effects because it's not very clear. Then here, uh, there's this area. Can you see the shape now here? This is the outside area. Uh, this is the inside area for the area. It's, I think it's a capsule. These areas send to different audio buses. Here you have two different reverbs with different settings. So when you have sounds in the outer area, there is a much larger reverb happening. <coughs> and when sounds are produced in some other area, they send uh, to the reactor bus, which has a smaller reverb. Like, for example, you can see here. This has a room size of uh, 98, this is 74, so the reverb is different. Uh, well, I, I can't show you right now why it works, but the idea is that you, you can have different areas sending to different reverbs. For example, if you had an area that was underwater, you can send it to a bus that has a like low bus filter, so it, everything is muffled. So the, the audio system, the, the position audio system in Godot is really cool also. This, this demo showcases it, but it's not really um, uh, clear. I didn't add it to a presentation due to lack of time. So yeah, well, any more questions? Oh, the, no, no, the, the, chair, the chair demo was just a modeling technique. Uh, I didn't use it for this demo. Uh, it just was uh, when I have the chair on the living room, this is just a modeling technique uh, that you can use. Uh, it's a different one than the one that was used for this yeah. demo. But why would you do it? Why, what is the benefit of it? No, I just show it because it's a different way. The, the talk is about making open source games. Uh, yeah. So I, I added this different technique you can use just in case you may want to use it because uh, modeling is something too complex. If you're going to target mobile, probably using this technique of doing really complex geometry is not going to work, but the other one will work fine because it's very low polygon. Okay. So the main reason to use atmospheric modeling is to really slow them down? Or yeah, it depends on the style probably, but it really depends on what you like, what your style you like. It, it actually is a pretty low polygon technique, so you can use it for mobile, it works pretty well. Uh, the other one is not really for mobile, uh, it works really nice for desktop. Uh, so yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Well, no more questions then. Well, thanks everyone. Thank oh.